comfortable. There's the light here. I want to get close to the mic because sometimes it's been difficult to hear the speakers from here, from the floor. If I may, I would first of all like to thank the Regional Minister of Sustainability in the Island Council for the trust they've placed in me and in my research team that I work with to roll out an initiative that I think is a key action in order to face the future to develop and transform this sector with a certain degree of reliability, i.e. that we're taking the right path that will give us a bit more security and this will enable us to meet some of the objectives that we have set. If I may, I would also like to thank I, this last two days have been like a master's course, an intensive master's course in Waste Manager. This conference has been a gift for m both myself and my research team because the amount of experts, not just the ones who have taken part so generously, they've come from the island, from the region, from all over the mainland and Europe, who have been extremely generous as part of the advisory committee, I was saying they, they've been highly generous, extremely generous in coming and sharing their knowledge with you. And also all of you here in the auditorium with all the networking that I've done to, in order to work with all of you, you've proven to be extremely generous too. I think all of us must be a bunch of waste nerds, or if we're not, we will be very soon. So that's taken up most of my time. So what am I going to do? Can't I have a, a lapel mic or something? OK, great. That'd be great. Can you hear me? Yes, fine. So what I'm going to do is to introduce the Waste Observatory of Tenerife. It hasn't been created yet. This is initiative of the Tenerife Island Council, and it will become a tool not just for mining data, but also for providing advice and dissemination for the sector. But before I introduce the observatory, we've prepared a few slides that I'm going to go through very quickly because I only want to use a couple of them in order to summarize some of our elements of our diagnosis. What we can see here on this slide is our planning in brown of the Tenerife Island Council for 2004 and the forecasts. The, the solid line is the waste that's been produced overall in Tenerife. The blue line is the population. Basically, the, the island council or the planners still factor in the population as the decisive factor in generating waste. Basically, what we're seeing in the past cycle and the current cycle of economic recession, there's a decoupling of the population, i.e. the population, the resident population is not the decisive factor. The decisive factor, what we usually do in planning, is add somebody that we call the tourist that would generate the same waste as the residents as we've been as we've heard as if the tourist was an, just another average resident so we add this factor but the tourist industry and the commercial and industrial industries are economic sectors that have to be factored in to our assessment of the model and also into the model's policies in order to decouple waste generation, not just from the resident population, but also from the tourist industry. So let's go straight to this slide, which is waste generation per capita in each municipality of the island. What this slide is showing us, first of all, is that this is a small continent. 
no, because it's surrounded by water and we have 31 different waste generation and management model. But the time has come for the island waste policy ha has to follow integrated management, but it needs to couple the municipalities as the main players or one of the main players when they prepare their waste management plans. Just a quick thought to share with you about facts and figures. Last night I looked at some of our indicators, but basically the data holds very complex realities in waste management, and this is far truer than maybe in some other fields. Just to simplify things, the environmental complex of Arico receives 95% of the waste of the whole island. It might be 90, 85, if we add sludges from the water treatment plants. That's not important. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that we bear in mind that sorting or the sorting rates that we're seeing in them from the main players in selective collection is reflecting an effort that bears no relations to the amount of waste that's generated. In other words, this reflections the municipal comparison of the per capita or generate a per capita generation of right, uh, glass on the island of Tenerife. Basically, what we have up here on the screen, Adeje, they must be drinking a lot of whiskey. The capacity or the recovery of packaging in the tourist municipality is far higher than the rest of the island. If we try to compare these per capita rates with national rates, what we're saying is that our consumption patterns are exactly the same as the national ones. And in a process where the, pri the priority is to minimize our waste, then we're caught in this trap because we're using indicators and numbers that do not help us either to clarify the situation, nor do they help us to design a solution. To simplify the diagnosis of 20 years of managing waste on the island of Tenerife, might be that we do plan with very partial and very few data, data on some fractions but not others, with KPIs that are not associated to variables that would explain the data. We have island-wide management that is basically done by separating tasks. Okay, you do this, you do that. At home, they can do that, and you do this, something else. And the municipal is in charge of collecting. The island council treats it. But there's no co-responsibility, and therefore there's no coordination of the tasks. And with this conference, one thing is made clear is that integral waste management on the island of Tenerife has to question this division of labor. We have a problem of rigid market structures. We've started to identify problems of economies of scale, i.e. the size of the facilities that we have. We're identified problems of economies of density and scope, because it's not the same to manage all the fractions as, ma as only f managing the remaining fraction. We need to drill down deeper in what's being done, how it's being done, in order to have an in-depth knowledge of what the model is and how it works. Two other thoughts to share with you. The double island factor makes us a terribly fragile and vulnerable area facing problems in developing a managing model that's been made clear. The main problem at the moment is the legislation and the planning at a regional level. There's a total paralyzation in developing legislation and in investment capacity and cooperation with the island governments and the municipalities in order to develop this industry. And obviously, at a nationwide level, we need to see a more distinctive vision of what it means to have an island that's 2,000 kilometers away from the, main, in the, from the mainland and divided into seven different islands with a high population density. What are the Waste Observatory of Tenerife 
this is the body that has to help to improve the information and planning of this industry. The mission of the observatory is to become a key tool for all stakeholders. The regional observatory for the Ile de France in Paris has been presented. So I can't offer too much new with regard to what we have to do in the future. I think what we have to do has been made clear. So in the coming years, the research team is going to, to try to make a contribution to transparency to in the public institutions that take part in managing our waste, and also the companies. We want to offer scientific and technical um, stringency in the university, and we also have to be impartial and critical. And also we have a lot of know-how which is what drives the development of this sector throughout the world. The kind of activities that we want to do is divided into three. Monitoring is the first of these. The, basically, the structure that we have is the same. We need to gather m data and m raise the profile. First of all, for the, at grassroots level, because if the ordinary man in the street does not understand the results of his participation, then he's not likely to make a contribution to the model. And I think what's happening is that people are behaving in a way that works against the objectives of this model. We want to integrate socio-democratic, economic data that will enable us to decouple going forward. We will take a step back from the data and we'll be able to decouple our consumption model, our development model, and our economic model from waste generation and what we do with it. And what we want to do is to create visibility for best practices, visibility for what's done in other countries. I think that the Canary Island model has to take a little bit from each of these different initiatives and create its own model. And the observatory can make a contribution to this. We will work with a system of social indicators that's been developed in the United States. These are accountability for the public administration indicators. And we're trying to standardize all these concepts because each person has a different name for, different, for the same thing when there is a European terminology. The third part of our, the mission for the Waste Observatory of Tenerife will be to use the big data and open data instruments that the Island Council has in order to share all the data on uh, and collect all the data on waste management. We're going to offer degree courses in this and vocational training, basically because we work in the universities. So we want to contaminate all the departments. We want to mainstream this university management, training, research. We want people to talk about waste. We think that we have to go beyond the environmental education of separating between green and yellow bins. We think that we can train professionals in the university who will be able to make a contribution towards the concept of green economy that the European Union wants to develop. And I will conclude with two simple thoughts. We're used to talking about grassroots participation, especially in this island, as a process that, this, that happens during, for a couple of weeks or, or just before the plan is a, approved, in order to have an impact on the process of developing models of all kinds, especially in waste management. I remember 16 years ago when I came back to Tenerife, I tried to join a team that wanted to assess the island waste plan but we never even got a copy of the plan. In the end, it was not approved. But I think we're now in a completely different stage, and I think that the Island Council 
is playing a leading role in this change of policy. And grassroots participation in the recycling or the waste industry has to bear in mind one important thing. The waste sector is the most important one in the world. It's more important than any other sector. We have 22 million working pe people in working age who take decisions at work that will have an impact on waste management. Purchases, design, shopping, absolutely everything in our production system is decided by the people who take uh, participate. It's not decisions that take the final decisions, it's people. So these people are our main allies in modifying our production system. We have 18 million households. These are entities that will have, some will have more, some will have less inhabitants, but they take decisions every day on the design of their house, their furniture, what they're going to buy, and how they're going to deposit that waste. We have 10 million students between three and 25 years old, but they're studying all day. But what problems are they studying? Are they all going to be ministers of, the, of, uh, of finance? We might have a couple, but we need economists who understand the information, that will understand local problems, people who are capable of designing solutions for local problems. That will be our contribution to the, the global knowledge economy. That's why it's so important that this initiative is rolled out by the university in two red lines. First of all, the sector generates 77,000 jobs directly, but it's only concentrated in 130 companies, which is not very many at all. These are companies that generate around six, they have a turnover of six billion euros a year between domestic and international business. Five of them dominate 70% of that six billions. We have problems in the economic management of the problem because they need to factor in that we have an enormous capacity for generating revenues and monologue, uh, information revenues and revenues that we are decoupling to some extent from the development of our waste management model. I don't know how much time I've taken, you'll have to excuse me. It might look simple from up there. In the last couple of days, I've been thinking about the, the real objective of this observatory. And I think basically our work, the university team that's going to be working in the Tenerife Waste Observatory has a very important mission, and that is to generate trust and confidence in the sector. It's a highly complex sector. There are a lot of interests in different areas, regional, local, and European. So I think what we really need is you cannot mistrust. What we want is for people to believe in the information they're given about waste management, and that's going to be our main mission. So with that, I'd like to welcome all of you, because I think the observatory will be comprised of each and every one of the players who take a direct part in managing waste, and also at a grassroots level, who want to breathe some life into it and make a contribution. Thank you very much.